طيب موفينج تو ذا نكست سيناريو هو از جوينج تو ليك ذا سيناريو كان تيك ات في نو نو ون مين دكتور بركات برضه؟ فتحي فتحي دكتور فتحي طيب دكتور فتحي مستر علي 42 years old gentleman who suffers symptoms suggestive of uh, gourd uh, or gastroesophageal reflux disease despite he was complain he was complain compliant on his medication his symptoms are not responding anymore um, OGD was done Uh, which revealed evidence of Barrett esophagus. Your task to discuss with him the result of his endoscopy and management plan. How old is he, Doctor? Forty-two. And the screen is there? No, there is no screen. Bluetooth connected. Okay, we can start. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yes, you can start? Yes, you start. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, am I talking to Mr. Ali? Yes. Hello, Mr. Ali. I'm Dr. Shanzli, one of the doctors in duty today. I'm here to talk to uh, with you about your condition, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali, just to confirm your identity, you are 42 years old, right? Yes. Okay, Mr. Ali, I'd like to initiate our meeting, if you don't mind, by, you know, by asking you what you know so far about your condition. Uh, I've been suffering from this heartburn and uh, acid brush in my mouth, um, the stomach pain. Um, has been present for since two years. Uh, I received a lot of medication at the start. Uh, my symptoms was improving with this treatment. Uh, right now, uh, there is no improvement. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, my symptoms are worsening. Okay. Um, I, I, uh, according to the information be, uh, provided to me, you did some sort of camera test, right? Yes. When was that? Um, I'm just waiting for the result of this camera test. Okay. I'm here I got the result. Okay. I, I asked when was that, Africa? When was that? Sorry? When, when was the camera test? Last week. Done? Last week. Okay. Uh, can I ask what you expect from this camera test? I'm just anxious about your school's doctor, like Nasty Gross. Okay, I got the results of the camera test now, Mr. Uh, Ali. Uh, it revealed what's called an, a condition called Barrett's esophagus. Have you ever heard about this condition before? No. Okay. This is a condition which usually uh, it's uh, encountered in 
some patients who experience some sort of heartburn and pain in their upper tummy, like the symptoms you experience it now. Uh, the exact the exact cause of this condition is still so far unknown, but uh, it's usually common in, uh, in some people who are consuming alcohol, a lot of alcohol or are heavy smokers. And that will lead me to the next question. Do you smoke, Mr. Ali? Yes. I smoke yeah. about four packs every day for the last maybe 20 years or more. Oh, that's too much. Um, have, haven't you ever thought about stopping smoking? Uh, no. Okay. That, uh, what about alcohol consumption? Mm, occasionally. Occasionally. Okay. Less than 14 units per week? No, uh, no I think um, sometimes I take binge drink, especially in the weekends. Okay, uh, Mr. Ali, um, I'm sorry to tell you that, but uh, this condition can be pretty serious if we don't manage it properly. And oh. the first... Oh, what do you mean by serious, doctor? Uh, is it cancer? It's so far, it's not cancer, but this kind of, this kind of disease or lesion, when it comes, uh, usually it is, it's predisposed as cancer. That means if if it's not managed properly, it may lead to cancer. Oh, so uh, is this condition manageable, doctor? Is there any treatment for this to prevent cancer? Sure, there are treatments for it. But the first step in this management of this, the, in the management of this disease is to modify the predisposing factors of this disease, of, the, of this condition. And the most important modifiable uh, cause in the mo at the moment is to stop smoking and moderate the alcohol intake, Mr. Ali. Um, I think stopping smoking is difficult, doctor. Uh, Can I ask why, sure. Mr. Ali? Do you have any form of stress that I should know should know about? No. If you don't mind. It is a sort of, I've been smoking since more than 20 years, as I told you. So it is a hard decision to take. But uh, don't you agree with me that it's too much to, to smoke about four bags per day, which is equivalent to 80 cigarettes per day? Usually the people who smoke this amount usually have some cause to smoke this amount. Can I ask about your occupation? No, no, no. I'm just a habit. I'm an engineer. Uh, you like smoking? Okay. Yes. Uh, what kind of engineer are you, Mr. Ali? Um, a computer. Computer engineering. That's most of your time. You are sitting on the desk yes. in front of a screen, right? Yes. Uh, do you, is there any stress uh, either on the social life or the professional life recently, Mr. Ali? No. No form of stress. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about your dietary habits, Mr. Ali? Is there any favorable kind of food? Uh, I like uh, spicy food, um, Chinese food. This is my preferable type. Oh, this is another cause which may cause this. This is another cause which may cause this kind of condition, Mr. Ali. Spicy food uh, or excessive spicy food is one of the causes which may cause this condition. Um, Mr. Ali, would like to agree about something. There are multiple factors uh, in your habits, including smoking, drinking, and food habits, which which cause this condition. Don't you agree with me about this? Mm, it's okay, doctor. Yes, I agree as well. You are saying this is the cause. Uh, and you, what about the you, medication? I'm taking a lot of medication that is not improving my condition. What kind of medications are you taking, Mr. Ali? Um, some pills before meal, some pills for acid. Can I, do you know their names or you have medication list? I cannot recall me? it right now. Okay. Uh, 
these medications were prescribed you recently or since, since two what? years they have been modified using um, alternating between that um, changing from type to type because of your uh, previous diagnosis as a gas as a reflux right yes um, mr ali these modifications may help to decrease the effect of acid in your gut and may help to relieve the symptoms but sometimes if we don't modify the factors which we, which cause all these symptoms we'll not be able to treat the symptoms we'll not be able to manage it and i and i i told you at the beginning of the meeting this kind of this condition with this disease may be exposed to a mercy be exposed to a mercy more serious disease like cancer and i think that both of us don't like to reach this stage right yes sure um, i think that do, do you consider can, can you consider stopping stopping smoking or moderate alcohol intake yes sure i think i i may need some help but yes i can okay i'd be glad to offer you this kind of help mr ali we have smoking cessation clinics and alcohol cessation clinics which may help you uh, in in modifying your and uh, stopping smoking and modifying your alcohol intake or stopping it at all and even a dietitian will help you in modifying the diet which you are consuming right now so that we can decrease the yes doctor it's okay we can decrease it be great if you do yes it may help us in treating this condition and decrease uh, the propagation of this condition into a more serious disease like cancer yes doctor i know if you do. i know it i know it would be a, a very difficult uh, it will be difficult. It will have a hard times in the in the in the in the in the near future, and it will not be easy. But I'd like to I'd like to assure you that all of us here will be supporting you and will be around you. All what we need from you, if you don't mind, of course, that to be committed to the to the instructions and which will be given to you by our team so that we can treat this condition as rapid as possible. Okay. Okay, doctor. Um, if this can help, I can commit. It's okay. Okay. Don't uh, okay. Uh, do you have any other concern for me you'd like to... I'm just concerned, yeah. doctor, uh, uh, about uh, medication. Is there any change in medication? And if there is any other uh, manipulation in my life that I have to do apart from stopping smoking and alcohol and dietary habits? We will arrange this with the consultant. Of course, any modifications and medications will be arranged by my consultants. And if there is any kind of procedure which you will have to go to go to, to go through in the future, we'll will uh, will make a schedule we'll schedule a follow-up visits in a periodic basis. Okay. And we'll have to follow you thoroughly during the next during the next weeks, so that we avoid any kind of uh, any. No, I need to repeat this camera test again. You may have to repeat it after a few months, so that after after you stop yes. smoking, after you stop alcohol intake, after you modify dietary habits, and after this, so that we'll see if this condition uh, was, uh, would be relieved or not, but. What I'm asking you, even after the leave, after if the future camera test hopefully will uh, reveal better, uh, better results, will not do not return to the smoking with the alcohol intake. I know it will be a very difficult time for you, but be sure that all of us will support you during this difficult time, Mr. Ali. Okay, doctor, this will be great. Uh, Mr. Ali, at the end of our meeting, can you tell me what the message you really you? You yes, receive. doctor, I got that uh, this um, reflux disease caused uh, some soreness in my foot pipe, and this can be uh, seriously harmful if it turns to be nasty gross this long time, uh, on the long time. And I have to modify uh, some of my habits, like stop drinking and smoking, and also uh, check 
my battery uh, habits. Okay, doctor, thank you. I'm finished. Uh, medical issue, Hana, yeah, doctor. Medical issue here is explaining the diagnosis and uh, explaining the diagnosis and the management for a patient. Yes. Uh, what about surveillance? How frequent you need to do the surveillance in baritosophagus? Uh, the surveillance uh, most probably it would be by average endoscopy every six months. Uh, whatever the stage. What about the treatment? The treatment mainly of, of the predisposing causes factors like smoking, alcohol intake, that you have it in addition to high dose proton bump inhibitors. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, doctor. Um, other treatment? I don't recall. Okay. Okay, um, doctor, but a few some points that I have to comment on. I'll start by uh, explaining the disease. Uh, you know, it is important in such case to draw to your patient. Um, how much you know about your condition? Um, what do you expect the result of your scan? Uh, you, you know, this is your food pipe and this is your stomach. There is a gate between your food pipe and stomach which allow food to pass from your mouth down to your uh, stomach, but prevent uh, acid in your tummy to return back from your stomach to your food pipe. In your condition, this gate is not functioning well. So it function in, act in, works in both directions, allowing the reflux or the returning back of acid from your stomach into your esophagus or food pipe, uh, which in your food pipe is not adapted to this acid, so it starts to be sore. This time, the lining of your food pipe starts to change, which we call it barit esophagus. So you link the new diagnosis with the old diagnosis and explain barit esophagus in a simple way. Uh, in such condition, uh, the line of the esophagus start to change into another part, another type, uh, which um, is called barit esophagus. Uh, you know, there are many causes that can cause this problem in this gate, uh, or this uh, can exacerbate this reflux disease. One of them is obesity or overweight. So, one important item to try to lose weight this will improve the function of this gate or valve. Uh, another issue is the type of food you are taking. So would you tell me more about your meals, about your food preference? Do you eat spicy food, very hot or very cold um, food or drinks? Actually, all this can damage more the lining of your gut uh, so or food pipe. So you have to avoid spicy food. Avoid too hot or too uh, cold uh, drinks. Uh, again, let me ask you, uh, do you smoke? Uh, he is taking cigarettes uh, in a, um, with a high smoking index. Um, it is advisable to stop smoking. Have you ever tried to stop smoking? Uh, what do you think if I told you that this will help to improve your symptom and prevent further changes, which may lead to nasty growth, as I told you? Do you think it's worth that you try to stop smoking? I can help you in this issue by referring you to smoking cessation clinic and cut it short. Don't go through uh, the reason why he is smoking. So this is a function of smoking cessation clinic. What about alcohol? How much you drink if he exceeds? 14 units per week, including the weekends. I'm sorry to tell you that this is too much amount. You have to moderate your alcohol intake. Um, so uh, let me ask you, do you drink alcohol? You have to assess here the cage score. And the importance of cage score is to find out if this patient is able to moderate or stop the alcohol by himself or need uh, assistance. Um, so, Cage mean, have you ever tried to cut? C for cut, cut your alcohol intake. Are you annoyed, A for annoyed, by people criticizing your alcohol intake? Uh, G, do you feel guilty 
for taking alcohol. Uh, so if he tried to cut his alcohol intake, but he failed, he is feeling guilty, but despite this feeling, he cannot stop his alcohol intake. And he uh, is annoyed by people criticizing the alcohol intake, which means he drank too much, but uh, he couldn't stop uh, his alcohol intake. The three of them means that he is um, alcoholic or he needs assessment uh, assistance to stop the alcohol. Uh, on the other hand, uh, do you drink alcohol first thing in the morning on opening your eye? This is the last item, eye opener. Uh, so if you drink alcohol in the first thing in the the first thing to do when he open his eyes, this means again alone. This means he's alcoholic. So if you assess the cage score and you find your patient alcoholic uh, or addict to alcohol, you don't mention, you don't have to, to mean you uh, to say you are alcoholic or you are addict to alcohol. Just mention to him, I can help you by offering you or referring you to um, a specialized institute that can help you moderating your alcohol intake. Another issue, there are some habits that you have to learn about meals. You have to uh, eat while you are sitting. Uh, you don't have to lie down except two hours after meal. So let me summarize again. Losing weight, avoiding spicy food, very hot food or um, iced food or drinks, uh, avoiding smoking and alcohol and um, adopting healthy um, uh, way of eating, this will minimize the reflux of acid into your food pile. Another uh, part in our management is treating you by giving you some medications that improve the motility or the movement of your food pipe and also decrease the acid production. This will help to uh, improve your symptoms. Uh, I would stress on that treatment alone will not improve your symptom you have to strictly adhere to the steps that we agreed for before how do you feel about this what do you think about this do you agree with me about stopping this uh, or doing this modification in your lifestyle um, i know it may be difficult at the start but getting rid of all these symptoms um worth that you try and also avoiding serious complications like nasty grass because persistence of this acid reflux will cause uh, this barrett esophagus to shift into nasty grass, which is serious condition. Uh, so we have to avoid this. Right now, there is no rule for surgeries, just we have to know exactly the type, uh, the details of the SNP uh, that we are waiting for because it will. Um, tell us how frequent we need to do this camera test because we have to do a regular follow-up by the camera test, the frequency of which depends on the result of the SNP that we took. And each time we took um, a SNP and check if there is any deterioration to treat um, and prevent the, the occurrence of nasty gross. Um, so what do you think about this? ask about the concern, summarize, and get the uh, conclusion. This is important to refer him again to the dietitian to help him losing weight and to help uh, to review his dietary uh, um, components. This is a recommendation for endoscopic surveillance, and this usually in the discussion with the examiner, unless you got one of these biopsy results, here there is no biopsy result. But uh, usually in barrett esophagus is diagnosed by endoscopy and we take four quadrant biopsy. And according to the result of the biopsy, we do the surveillance. Uh, it is done every three to five years for patient without dysplasia. If low grade dysplasia, we do the surveillance every six to 12 months. And if there is high grade dysplasia, you do the uh, surveillance every three months. It is important to know this uh, because it is asked by the examiner in case of barrett esophagus, three to five years if no dysplasia, if low grade dysplasia, six to 12 months, if high grade dysplasia, every three months. 
the management of real uh, barrier esophagus depends on the uh, biopsy result apart from the lifestyle modification and the treatment which is proton pump inhibitor and uh, prokinetic drugs uh, according uh, if it is uh, no dysplasia just surveillance uh, as i mentioned if there is dysplasia low grade repeat uh, and if it is high grade you consider either ablative uh, radio frequency ablation uh, or intensive more intensive in real uh, endoscopic uh, surveillance, as I mentioned, every three months, and oesophagectomy can be considered before development of cancer because cancer oesophagus, if you remember in the first lecture, it is one of the uh, non uh, treatable cancer. It is one of the cancers with very poor prognosis once diagnosed is inoperable. So, no rule for surgery if he developed cancer oesophagus. The surgery in the uh, heart. High grade uh, dysplasia phase, not in the cancer phase. Clear? So, uh, do you have any questions? Very good, Dr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I shared the screen before or not of the surveillance? It was shared? No, no, I shared, but cut. It was cut. <laughs> uh, uh, cut after I finished, right? No, no, it's, it was cut even if you own your screen. Okay. Only half of the screen appeared. It was a high grade you shared, yeah. Yes. Uh, I leave it because it is important uh, while discussion. Uh, any questions? Uh, doctor, can you share the Ready drawing? The screening, the drawing, the drawing, the drawing. Yes, yes, okay. I, uh, yes, just uh, reading the messages and uh, child data. Periodic screening and surveillance, yes, every six months? No, depending on no metaplasia, high grade, dysplasia, sorry, high grade or low grade. Uh, mucosal ablation uh, done by radio frequency uh, or laser therapy. Mm. Mucosal ablation, yes, it is ablation therapy. Uh, mucosal ablation, if high grade, no. Mucosal aberration. Yes, if I grade it, sorry. Here the scenario is geared refractory, which means tried medication and lifestyle. No, he didn't mention about lifestyle and he is still smoking, still on alcohol. He didn't do any of the lifestyle medication. Uh, any other questions? Thank you, Doctor. Great session. Uh, uh, surveillance uh, timing depends on this one, huh? Not this one. Hmm. Uh, the first one is the guidelines. Any other questions? A legal issue. A legal issue is uh, the consent for endoscopy, but you are not counseling about endoscopy now. If, uh, there is no legal medical issue. Anything else? Thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Mona, how to explain about hiatus hernia to the patient? Uh, how can like that disease we can explain? You can draw it first. Uh, this is your chest. Uh, this is your lung. This is your tummy. There is. Uh, what is called diaphragm here, which is um, a sort of muscle that separates your chest from your muscle. There is a defect in this uh, diaphragm, which causes uh, uh, protrusion of part of your stomach into your lung, which can cause, and you explain first. Uh, okay. Can what I explain? Uh, in the session clinic, you should. Stopping is uh, not easy decision. It is difficult decision to take. Sorry, it is a difficult decision to take. So, uh, if you are offering stopping smoking, you have to offer a smoking session clinic. Hmm. Doctor Ramona, the doctor has asked questions? now about the disease. What's the disease? Hiatal hernia, you mean? The defect in the hiatal hernia, yes. Okay. Hmm. And the hiatal 
سوري هيت هنا مينيت سيرجري رايت يس If you start by losing weight first, then surgical option of the tissue. According to the size of the hernia, and it is not our decision. Usually, in such condition, you, you, uh, your task is clear. Counsel about it. Hmm. Any other question? Hello, Doctor. Uh, this uh, and the previous scenario. Hmm. Uh, yeah, is it the same? Uh, like medical um, uh, error or medical no. malpractice? Because no. First one was IBS, uh, then celiac. Here, GERD, then Barrett. Sure, Doctor. At first one, we discussed it in details. So I'm not going to go through it. Uh, you can uh, hear it on the uh, uh, record later on. Uh, but here, there is no, uh, it is a complication. It is a natural history of the disease. GERD, which is not responding to treatment, this is a natural history. This is not complication, not uh, error. Uh, not sorry, not uh, medical error or malpractice. It is a complication of the disease. He is receiving treatment, not responding to treatment, so progress to uh, baritosophagus. Okay, okay. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um, thank you, doctor. Um, actually, I prepared another scenario, but I'm going to stop here because of time. Uh, We'll continue next session, inshallah. Uh, do you have any uh, comments or questions? Uh, excuse me, Dr. Amuna. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. yes. Uh, I mean, do I need to explain all about lifestyle modification and uh, medication? Yes. Or, uh, yeah, I can yes. see, I, I, I can say to the patient, I will refer you to the uh, doctor, no. doctor the dietitian no. who will give the appropriate treatment. No. No, a uh, treatment, not dietitian. A dietitian will help you only in reducing mm. weight and telling him about the avoiding uh, the spicy food. Will, uh, okay. Uh, mm. But you have to talk, tell him. Doctor, a uh, few important issue that you raise. Don't throw your task to others. Don't throw your task to the consultant. Don't throw your task to other specialty. If there is a disease with known treatment, you have to mention it in full. This is your task. Mm. You filter the patient who should be referred to speciality or to the consultant. You don't get the patient, then refer him. You are not a referring physician. You are a treating physician as long as in this, you are in this, uh, um, in your um, job prescription. But if you need more help, you refer him to the uh, one who is going to give him help as a part of multidisciplinary team, which yes, you are, one important person or an important member of this team. I mean, I need to tell him that I will uh, refer you to a multidisciplinary team in the form of uh, gut doctor and the dietitian. Uh, usually, you are the gut doctor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and usually, you are the senior house officer of gastroenterology. Okay, usually, okay, you are you. talking uh, in your specialty. Mm, thank okay, you. Okay, okay. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. Uh, then inshallah on the YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or if you remember any questions, uh, please edit. Listen to it because uh, they are important scenarios. So it is important to um, hear it many times. Uh, this will help you inshallah. Um, and if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to send. Thank you. See you soon.